and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Asperia. Last time we finished the fight with Jaeger, and this time we're in Capanor because I realized something off screen that we promised to come back here when Estelle was in the party, except there's no bloody event here involving that family. <laughs> uh, so now you're probably wondering why are we here then? Well, well, I didn't find Polly and Teagle, and I don't remember the mother's name because she didn't ever get kidnapped, so I don't remember her name ever being spoken, <laughs> so I don't remember what it is. Uh, but I actually managed to find Duke here. Hey. I will take back what I have loaned. You allowed that to rise again. You cannot be trusted with Dane Nomos. Do you know what that thing is? The Legacy of the Ancients. A giant Blastia that could save the world from impending doom. But you have allowed it to fall into hands that would use it for ill purposes. All things must be returned to their proper places. Begin by returning that sword to me. Wait, if this should be returned to its proper place, wouldn't that mean giving it to Estelle? Nothing would be more fruitless than giving it to one who cannot use it properly. For us, Dane Nomos was never anything more than proof of Imperial lineage. So perhaps you are better suited to wield it. Hmm. So if you don't mind, could you let me keep it a little longer? We're going to stop Alexei ourselves. And we need this to do it. Very well. However, if you should waver before the task you face, I will come again to claim the sword. Okay, let's go. Just kind of a nice little side event. I don't know what Duke's purpose is in the plot. He obviously knows something, uh, if he has Dane Nomos. But I don't quite understand his role in the greater story quite yet. And part of me is wondering if he really does have a role or not, or if he's just kind of plot device in character form. <laughs> because that's kind of how he feels at the moment. <laughs> not gonna lie. What happened to the ghost ship? Okay, I'm a little bit confused because it was actually, I think, on the map for a really long time. But now it seems to be gone. Maybe it just ripped because of, well, uh, Zalde appearing. Because I could have sworn it was right about here. Oh well. I just thought that was confusing. I was like, where the heck did it go? Um... So normally, I would cut because, well, we're having to go back into a dungeon now, except I actually do want to show uh, that this is basically how you get back to the ship. You just kind of go backwards from that path. I never actually showed that, so I want to make note of that. Besides, it actually only takes like two minutes tops to actually get to where we were. Uh, encounters uh, permitting. Because all we need to do actually is go up these stairs and then through this hallway and then we're actually back where we were. Like no joke, th this was a really early encounter. I mean, I should have actually tossed a holy so bottle into the party out? first, but I kind of forgot. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, did I actually? Yeah, I did. Okay. You know what the scariest thing about this condition was for me? It was constantly trying to keep straight if I had uh, used a magic lens on both forms uh, because I would kind of like to have magic have that in the log for later <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that in subsequent playthroughs if that carries over that is meaning um, if I actually missed one magic lens that would mean I would have to replay the fight again and get the secret mission again because even if I got the achievement that doesn't mean anything in comparison to, you know, having the, um... Oh, what's the word for it? The actual clear, basically. Also, apparently you can fight, uh, Jaeger's subordinates if you get to some sort of secret event in, like, Capitorum or something. I don't even know how you do that. Um, I went back to Capitorum and didn't find anything of the sort, so obviously missed it. Um, if it's not too much trouble, and if people want to see it, let me know, because I would be. This fight's never gonna end. Okay, we'll just leave you here. Hey, be nice. 
Because I'd actually be okay with showing the fight. Except that means I'd have to go through a certain amount of game if it's like too much work. If it's like a multi-step kind of process that begins like 10 hours ago, maybe I wouldn't show it. Uh, but I, w I will like to show as I would like to show as much as I can. So if there's any like really notable events that uh, uh, would be fun to see, let me know. Now, Dark and Forest is out because that would take a million years to replay the entire game again to show all the title requirements. I, I probably mention them. At some point, but I'm not gonna like make a big deal out of it because again, I don't really want to have to play uh, the game again just to show off like a costume title. <laughs> to be blunt, now I've heard this place is kind of a maze at this point, so we'll have to. Oh yeah, I forgot to I had the, the holy bottle. <laughs> it's like why is nothing attacking? Um, Tails puzzle is always awful. Um, by awful, I don't mean awful, awful. I just mean, uh, they're kind of, kind of a lot of work, I guess. Another world charm, which negates some status effects, so, uh, yeah, that's good to have. It makes me a little bit worried about what's coming up. The music here sounds kind of generic, actually. Kind of like standard, like something you'd hear out of Abyss, or... Vesperi, not Vesperia, or uh, Symphonia, or one other, one of those other, that one of those other games. It's just like, eh. It's not distinct. Like, this song at uh, Agatha Forest I actually really like, because it sounded really unique compared to other Tales songs. And I thought that was actually really cool. Uh... <sighs> I know what we have to do here, and I'm... Kind of not looking forward to it. <laughs> we got a water temple situation here, clearly. I don't like water temples. Fun story. Um, Twilight Princess in particular, I really don't like. Uh, which is actually funny, because I do like Twilight Princess as a game. But man, that water temple is good. Uh, I'd say Skyward Sword has the best, because the Ancient Cistern is barely a water temple. <laughs> uh, oh. Oops. That was not good. Great Bay is like a headache, but uh, it's actually pretty fun in my opinion. Uh, like I enjoy Great Bay, even though it's a complete freaking headache to actually um, navigate blind. I did not navigate it blind for the record. <laughs> I used a guide, even on my first playthrough. It's like, nope, not doing this. Um, I have an idea. I don't know what that does, but we pushed the thing off a ledge. So that must have accomplished something, right? <laughs> uh, okay. I have an idea. I'm not just saying that. I think I see what I have to do here. Now, Twilight Princesses, I think, took me the longest. You know, people give Ocarina of Time flack for its water temple, but frankly, I never had too many problems with it. Um, oh, okay, Master Quest I did. But uh, Ocarina of Time I actually finished without a guide. It took about two hours, though. But I actually just was really determined to beat it without a guide. Uh, just because everyone hyped up the water temple is like the worst thing in the game. No, this, this is the 3DS version and that did make it a little bit easier by giving more visual cues for some puzzles. So, you know, obviously that's a little bit different, but uh, yeah, I was actually really proud of the fact that I managed to make it through relatively unscathed. Relatively being the, the key phrase. What the heck are we supposed to do here? <laughs> like, seriously. Um, I'm really confused by this entire dungeon. New swivel over here. This moved. That moved. Huh. Interesting. Well, the pillar's in position, so maybe that's what we need? Oh... Clever. Um...
But now what is the question? Oh, this sinks. Okay. Huh. I was trying to figure out what they were trying to show me in that cutscene, and I didn't quite even catch it. Uh... Yeah, I'm not even sure what that was trying to show. There's a door up there that we have to get into. Do you have to push this thing down every- Also, what's this for? There's gotta be something to do with that, but I don't know what. Um... So that always- That always raises the water to that level. Which is probably important for something. Also, why is there a door down there? Um... Hmm... Now do we have to do this? Again, I didn't quite catch what it was trying to show there, and that's my problem. I didn't quite understand what that was supposed to be about. If I got that clue to what to do, this wouldn't be so bad, but it just kind of panned up. And I didn't quite catch what I was supposed to be looking for. Um... Can't go back there. I'm trying to think of other water temples now. <laughs> I'm legitimately trying to think of others. I mean, I think the Oracle games have water temples. At least one. Uh, they might both have water temples. I think they do, actually. Pan Hourglass had one that was kind of mixed with the sort of undead theme, which I actually appreciate the sort of melding of level ideas in Phantom Hourglass. There doesn't seem to be anything to do here. <laughs> the fact that this thing floats up is incredibly significant, I feel. This is raised right here, so we can't push it directly there. So yeah, that's not an option. Or... Oh, <laughs> never mind. Got my hopes up for a second. Now what is the significance of this thing? Looks like so Oh, the rubble raises. But you also can't sink? So like, uh... Yeah, what are you supposed to do about that? So I'm just trying to figure out. Um... Sure, we have 10 plus. Might as well. But yeah, what I don't get is... Like, when I did this, what was it trying to show me? Now I didn't do it that time. <laughs> Great. Hmm... When I hit the other crystal, the water level didn't go to a different place. The fact that this rubble raises above this door feels significant. Um, maybe I'm not supposed to be here yet. That's probably it, really. I'm probably overthinking this. Uh, big time. Big time. So let's head back out, because I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Um... I'm not looking this up, by the way. Uh, this is like a puzzle, so I want to at least take a stab at it myself. Place the prestigious red orb onto the pedestal. Supply the orb power of all creation. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Actually, back here... Okay, that's kind of a dirty trick. Charge! Um... Okay, so I'm using my usual strategy of either just... Mashing B... And A. <laughs> Pushing B and mashing A. Got both of them. Let's see. So in the other room, there are more pillars that could be pushed around. But they're on the other side, so we can interact with them. Uh, 
Uh, huh. Okay, I'm trying to figure out why they didn't actually work. In terms of, it, uh, fail strike. I've always kind of questioned in RPGs the, the concept of gaining experience when you're not even in the battle. It's like, are you just gaining experience when you're watching the fight? <laughs> um... Yeah, this is obviously significant, but it's probably where we ultimately... Okay, that door in the second level, I'm gonna call it the second level. Uh, that's obviously where that leads. That door leads to there, and that way you can... Um... Hmm, actually... Um... Here's a thought. Well, first of all, why is there a gap there? That's a good question, actually. Unless we have to defeat the enemies in the room, or something like that. Because I've just been avoiding encounters in this this room. Maybe you're not supposed to do that. There's also the fact that, you know, this seems inviting to push a pillar onto the other pillar. But maybe we have to just... Okay, I have an idea. Let's let's try this out. Can we push this around when it's in the water? The answer is no. <laughs> oh well. Uh... Yeah, the fact that this rubble lifts up in front of the door feels significant. Well, this other rubble is obviously significant. But is... Hmm... Can I do anything with this? Like, interact at any point? Doesn't seem like it. Actually... Huh. I think this is a broken one of those down there. Because there's two in the room. So I think it's just that, but broken. If I had to make an educated guess as to what uh, that's all about. Um... At some point, I'm just gonna fight these guys, because I'm running out of holy bottles, but... For now, I might as well. Now that I have them. So when I did this... Um... The sink. But yeah, the thing that just threw me off was, was the camera panning there, uh, when we used the other red switches. I didn't catch what they were directing me to, if I understood what I was supposed to be looking at. Uh, I would probably would have had an easier time. Also... If only there was a... Mm hmm There's that door up there. Well, how do we get to it? Okay, here's a thought. Here is a thought. Also, why are these crystals on the same level, though? <laughs> if they both waste water. Uh... How much can I move this? Can I move it all the way across? No, only on the dark blue. Okie dokie. Um... And yeah, there's that underwater passage. Is that supposed to be a passageway? I'm not really sure. Uh... Also, we can't use the sorcerer's ring in the water. I don't know if I really made a point to mention that. Uh, so that's good to know. Also... Hmm... Gonna double check something. Okay, so there's no like special markings on the door, meaning, oh, this is activated. Also, there's like these two squares, not sure if those are important or not. Um. Hmm. No, I'm actually just gonna double check if I aligned the pillar correctly. Uh, I wonder if I have to do this, or if I could just like, move it over here, and it'll work fine. But I just always do that to be on the safe side, because it's a clear, uh, point of interest, I guess you could say. Clear mark for it. But yeah, I just wonder if it has to do with the enemies. Just trying to see if that anything on that door lit up or anything. 
Can't do this then. If we're gonna be fighting things. Fight like I'm gonna die, huh? Yeah, like I legit don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for in this room. And that's the main thing. There's probably something really obvious, like when I see it, it'll be obvious, but at the present time, I have absolutely no clue what I'm supposed to be looking for. I think that's the thing that's getting me at the moment, uh, in terms of what's tripping me up, is it's not like, it's probably not a difficult puzzle, it's just, I'm not seeing something that's necessary. This happens in other games too, though. This isn't unique to Tails. But I feel like in Tales games and just RPGs in general, puzzle elements do mess me up a lot more than most games just because of weird perspective issues. And yes, the perspective I do find a little bit on the weird side uh, for this area. I wonder if that gold in me is actually a key to something, come to think of it. Um, why should the, the gold robot thing have the red orb the entire time? I kind of expected at this point, but then what's the point of the pillar? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because that's a bridge to the other side, but that also doesn't seem to contain anything. Also, Falling Stars was an art Raven learned uh, when I was leveling up at Zaphius before the fight with Estelle, because again, uh, when fights have really long cutscenes, I tend to make sure I can deal with them. Especially because I had already tried that fight a few times unsuccessfully. So yeah, this is a thing I do in RPGs in particular. If there's a particularly difficult fight, then I will over-prepare for it. Uh, just to re reduce the chances of things going bad. Uh, I remember with Final Fantasy VII on my first playthrough, I actually went out of my way to get all of the characters' ribbons because Sephiroth, spoiler, he's the final boss, um, not that that's terribly a surprise because he's like the main villain in the entire game. Um, he's infamous for inflicting a lot of really nasty assassin ailments that just really wreck the party. And that adds a lot to the difficulty. I also have stocked up on items, leveled up considerably, leveled up a lot of materia considerably. Uh, so by the time I actually got to Sephiroth, I was so over leveled the battle didn't even, like barely made it to the chorus part of the song. Uh, one winged angel is like probably one of the most iconic boss themes in the game. Uh, at least in an RPG, probably in video game period. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other iconic boss themes, and I'm honestly drawing a blank. You know, like the first thing to come to mind was Metal Solid 4, but that's a compilation of all the previous main themes for the Metal Gear Solid series, so that's not really a theme to the game itself. Our weapons are bravery, youth, modesty. Like any of you have those. Guess practice makes perfect. So that didn't do anything. What is this platform between, actually? Because there's a platform between that doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm like, what's that for? I'm not even sure if I quantify this as a puzzle, really. Or it's more of a labyrinth, it. almost. Okay, go ahead with that, and I guess I'll take on this guy. Final Fantasy VI was also comical because uh, the fight itself was over in probably about, about like two minutes. Uh, because uh, there's a thing in Final Fantasy VI that uh, allows you to cast magic four times consecutively. And there's a spell called, like, I think, Ultima, <laughs> that just basically does like almost 9999 damage, which I think is the damage cap in 6. So I basically gave someone like ultimate magic and uh, 4 times magic. So they were able to do about, oh, 4 times, about 36,000 damage per attack. And I think I had 2 characters with 4 times magic. And I had someone else with, I think, flare magic, which is like the next most powerful spell. Also with four times magic, so yeah, the final boss of uh, um, six wasn't exactly uh, 
a sight to behold either. It went really fast actually with all those uh, strategies. Now again, I do realize these are incredibly so cheap. But at the time, I didn't really care because I just wanted to finish those games because I'd never played them before. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know that doing so would completely break Final Boss. Actually, for 6, I think I did know. I know for 10, I purposefully broke it because everyone was like, Oh, the Final Boss of 10 is really tough. So I basically got all the weapons that could break the damage limit. And uh, thus was able to easily bypass the first part of the boss. The second part of the boss is weird with Final Fantasy X's Final Boss because you actually can't hurt it directly. Um, or actually you can't die, basically, is the gimmick. And it's kind of a weird fight. I guess if you're really unprepared for the Final Boss of ten, you could easily get into kind of a, a lock. Uh, where you're basically stuck in kind of a loop trying to fight this boss, uh, which would be bad, of course. Okay, so the enemies did not drop any pertinent items. So, that means that suspicion is out. So, bringing up the question, what the- oh. Huh. She's got a weird idea. But I don't think it would work, because I think those pedestals should do- I think this is, involves this block somehow. Like, if we could break this and get past, maybe that would help. I don't actually know. <laughs> um... We can get into that door, that'd be interesting, though I'm not entirely sure if there's anything even there. I mean, it, it'd be worth a look, nonetheless. Actually, what if I stand on this platform and shoot the thing with the ring? Aha! No, it took like 20 minutes to actually get somewhere this video. Uh, fantastic. Um, that is actually clever, but also really specific. Yes, I am skipping encounters. By the way, I actually looked at the next boss and he's level 50. So, yeah. We're not in a bad place in terms of levels. That's where we need to place a red orb. So, over here, this is that room where there's that block pushing puzzle with the pillars. Aha! There's the red orb. Oh, but there's a force field. Um. Hmm. So, obviously, this is designed to create a shortcut back. So we can now easily go back and save at least, so that's nice. Um, I hope that stays there, <laughs> so I don't have to do this all over again. Um, but yeah, we got three pillars. Um, got this pedestal in the- Okay, that raises the water. <laughs> Good to know. And makes a bajillion enemies appear. Fantastic. Um, obviously I'm gonna have to fight my way back, or just use a holy bottle, that's the other option. Uh, but I th Oh, that's still in effect, okay. Um... I think we're gonna cut it off here for now, and we'll s solve the rest of this puzzle in the next part. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more Tales of Asperia.